Okay, well yesterday we heard, um, I thought, a wonderful set of uh, discussions about, uh, well, about agency. And I counted, by my count, about 12 mentions of agency throughout the, uh, the various presentations. I felt that uh, probably my colleague Brian Morgan had more than the average. Um, and uh, it was very interesting that he mentioned that he builds agency into his uh, English as a World Language course or uh, sociocultural issues in teaching English in which he asks students to identify an issue, to develop a, um, a conception of the issue, how the issue could be improved, and to actually carry out um, the solution of the issue. In other words, he actually builds uh, agency into his, his, um, his course, his practice, uh, as part of teacher education. Um, I think Andrea also mentions agency implicitly and sometimes explicitly when she talks about um, reflection and action, reflection and action over time infused with greater knowledge and greater conscientiousness as some. Um, we heard about uh, the restrictions on agency of teachers and students in Johnny's paper when he talked about um, very narrow conceptions of internationalism and the role of international students from the top down, when in fact the international students are perfectly willing to be more than just how the top down uh, authorities of the university conceive them as. Um, so, coming to, so we've been warmed up on agency. And of course, all of you who read uh, Valkyria's paper between the Primo and Secondo courses of the Italian meal last night will um, have also been warmed up to that possibility. Um, I thought, uh, well, first of all, it's a great honor to engage in dialogue with Valkyria. I, I frankly love her. She's the most dialogic person I know. She always asks, do you get it? Am I on the right track? Is this the way to do it? Thank you for all your input, you know, with her irony and her entry asked us. Um, and the paper is a, a very interesting expression of the concern that she has as a teacher educator about apparent failure of um, teacher education programs, at least for English teachers in, uh, in Brazil, to, um, to embody agency, to enact agency, to take agency on board as part of their uh, professional profile. And she gives us a survey of uh, the historical reasons why this may be the case. The Jesuits, uh, mind you, uh, Papa Francisco, you know, let's face it, on those beaches at uh, Copacabana, he uh, had some agency. Come on, give him, you know, give him some love. Um, she talked about uh, coloniality, which uh, kind of never goes away if you study uh, indigenous policies, either in Canada or in Brazil, and the dictadura, uh, which probably uh, is part of the lives of all the teacher educators of a certain age who are very likely um, recovering from that experience. In other words, she talks about the historical uh, moments in Brazilian history which have impeded um, the development of a social consciousness in which agency would be a part. But by virtue of doing that, by referring to history, there is a period of Brazilian history which you didn't mention. This one. These moments after the protest of the Junio. In the five days I've been here, I've done everything I can to talk to people about it, to read uh, journals and um, magazines, and to understand 
what it is that is the task of teachers, of educators, to do in Brazil now. This even, by the way, was part of the little Portuguese course that, that Brian and Jati and I are part of back in Toronto. Our teacher brought in a document, Brazil News. Let's see if I have it. Why, yes, I do. Um, in which she asked us to read an article. Mudança de status nacional. Brasil passa de deitado eternamente em berço esplêndido para verás que é um filme teu, não foge a luta. And of course, none of us, this is completely opaque. So we did what um, every good Brazilian does. We learned the national anthem. By the way, you have the longest national anthem anywhere. <laughs> I have to tell you, it goes on forever. Um, but that's okay, there's a lot to be taught in national anthems. And who knows, a really great critical <laughs> agency the, um, treatment of uh, a Portuguese chorus might take a serious look at the Brazilian national anthem, what, what is happening there. Certainly, certainly a um, treatment of uh, English studies in Brazil should look at the Canadian national anthem. Uh, both in its English and its French forms, and um, find out what's going on there. For example, just a couple of days ago, there was a basketball game between uh, Brazilian and uh, Brazilian and Canadian women here. I don't know who won, but I noticed um, the two teams singing their relative national anthems. And um, you know, the Brazilians certainly sang their national anthem, and the Canadians. But there is the second line of the Canadian national anthem. Um, which is O Canada, our home and native land, which actually everyone every knows is our home on native land, <laughs> um, not our home and native land. True patriot love for all our sons command. And I could see these girls, our women's basketball team, one of them actually said, instead of, she said, for all our daughters' command. <laughs> and I thought, wow, maybe they're going to win today. Um, let's see. Three more minutes. Three more minutes, okay. A really nice treatment of um, Valkyria's paper would look at a third aspect of agency. We learned Agir. To act is very important. We learned that agency is not well developed in teacher training programs. But there was one aspect that was not developed, and that's another word in the word family, namely agenda. Agenda is what is to be done. Why have agency? What is it for? Is it just to acquire greater English, or is it for something else? And if it's for something else, where is that something else to be found? Uh, the general view of English is it's found in the economics of globalization and to assist young people around the world to jump on the train, hopefully get a job, hopefully become an entrepreneur, and fill the requirements of neoliberal, neoliberal, neoliberal um, corporate capitalism. That is an agency, a, a type of agency, a type of agenda, which I think has to be fought vigorously. And I think it's the responsibility of English teachers around the world, because English is becoming the world's global language, to occupy English. And to occupy English, I have an agenda for it. One more minute. And my agenda includes anything that is concerned with promoting civil society, particularly the protection of the planet. Anything that talks about parks, especially parks with capivaras in them. Anything that talks about bike paths. Anything that talks about public education. Anything that talks about peace. Anything that talks about forests. Anything that talks about human rights. Anything that talks about equality 
among diverse groups. Anything that uh, takes apart the modernist construction of the nation state, anything that links similarly minded individuals across, um, across boundaries to do this, and among teachers, anything that promotes the formation of a national association of English language teachers in each and every state of Brazil linked up across the country in a national organization. That Sounds would be like real agency. Thank you. Thank you very much.